Hi, I'm Ron Polk. I'm working in SketchUp today on a project and I am using two tools, groups and components, among many other tools, but they're two tools that are very powerful and very similar with one major difference. And so I thought I would take a minute and show you the difference between the two and then how I'm using them in a real world design. So I have these blocks here I use to sort of mass my models up and figure out spaces and dimensions. And so I have two different groups here. And I'm going to grab this bottom group. I'm going to hit the M key for move and tap the option key to copy and I'm going to copy it over here. Then I'm going to go into this copy and I'm going to edit it. I'm going to hit a circle and another circle. And then I'm going to hit the P key for push, pull, pull that out, push that in and done. So you can see that I made a copy of this group and I edited it and it's independent. So it has the protections or the envelope of being inside of a group so that I cannot edit this group unless I go into it. So if I hit a C key and draw right on it, that what I just drew there, if I hit the M key for move, you can see it's not attached. It is independent. So the group protects your geometry. So that's why it's important that whenever you design geometry that you either group it or make it a component. So that's how a group works. So now what I'm going to do is go into this group. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to explode it. And I'm going to triple click to grab all the geometry, both what I can see and not see. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to make it a component. Now there's one extra step making a group. That's all I'd have to do. But with a component, I give it a name. Now I could leave it component one and but I'm just going to call it test. I'm going to delete it anyway. Okay. So now I'm going to go and hit the M key for move, tap the option key to copy just like before. But now I'm going to go into this triple click. I'm going to hit the C key for circle and I'm drawing a circle in, drawing a circle in. I'm going to hit the P key for push, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, up all the way through to create a hole. And I'll do the same thing to this one. And now you can see that what I did to this is I is been copied over to this. So every copy I make of this component, it will remain the same. Even if I go back to the original, and I edit it, hit the C key, draw something in, maybe the R key to be different. And then I hit the push pull and I pull, I pull out, pull this out, or I push it in, how about pull that out? You can see that what I did to the original one happened to the copy. So it uh, keeps them connected. And if I had 30 copies, it'd be the same. Now this is how I'm using uh, the, these two tools on my bench model here. So I have these sawhorses. There's a lot of detail to them, spending a lot of time figuring out, perfecting them. So I made one uh, flat here. It's easier to do my designs and pull my dimensions and everything here rather than at angles where they're gonna end up. So once I got it how I wanted it, I made a copy. I left this one here, I made a copy, put it up at the angle I wanted, made a copy of that, put it at the other angle. Of course, copied both of them, moved it over for the second uh, sawhorse version. And then I started seeing details and changes, and I probably made 30 changes already to these just by working on this one. So what I'm doing right now is I've used these two inch radiuses all the way around, both for looks and for strength, but I decided that these shelves, I wanted to have uh, the shelf be as usable as possible. If I lay down material or tool on this, it'll start to slide up this radius sooner, and so I decided to change it to a half an inch. Now in the shop, I'm just going to make a template of this and use my router to make the other four. And so I'll just square cut this on my template, but I'll use a router bit that will make, uh, because when the router template hit, or when the router template guide hits the template, it has to make a radius there because router bits are, have a diameter to them. And so this is what the finished product will look like. Now to change it, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to hit the T key for tape measure. I need some uh, guidelines. I'm going to go quarter inch because I'm doing a half inch diameter. I'm going to the center of the diameter, which is half the diameter, quarter inch. 
And then I need to go into the component to edit it. So I'm going to triple click, one, two, three. That highlights it, it shows the dots on the surface, lets me know that whatever I do now, I'm gonna be changing it. But if you look over at the other four instances, they're also highlighted, indicating that whatever I do here is gonna be replicated over here. So what I'm gonna do is come over, I'm gonna hit the C key for circle, I will find that little red X, which is the intersection of my guidelines. I'm going to come out to quarter inch, which gives me a half inch circle. And then I am going to, because I'm going to be removing this wood, I'm going to hit the L key for line. I'm going to start over here and come over and lock in on that. Hit escape, do the same thing over here. And I'm zooming in and out by, with the scroll wheel on my mouse and go to that. So now I've got my circle and my lines. I'm gonna get rid of these lines, which I no longer need. I just needed that radius. And now I'm gonna click on that surface, which is what I'm removing. I'm gonna push it all the way down until it touches the bottom and it disappears. And then I can see the geometry that I need to get rid of. And one of the other things I like to do is when I've changed something uh, when it's in three dimensions is I click on this x-ray tool and I can see into the geometry. I say I don't have any miscellaneous lines. So I'll click that back off and I am going to go out of that component, edit, delete guides. Then I'm going to go to a top down view. Let's go to a front view. Hit the H tool for hand, scroll out and you can see now that each of the other instances of these have been mirrored. So I have that the same on all four. So that is the difference in a component and a group and how to use them. SketchUp Make is a free version of SketchUp that you can download. It's different than SketchUp Pro that you can download and use for a certain period of time and then have to purchase it. I use SketchUp Pro. Uh, there's other things that I need when I'm designing houses that I can't do with Make. But all of this kind of stuff you see me doing, it can be done with SketchUp Make. And when I put models up in the warehouse and you want to download them, again, it's SketchUp Make, M-A-K-E. And uh, then you can uh, do a lot of this stuff without having to purchase the uh, Pro version. Well, if you like these SketchUp videos, technology and home building and woodworking, then give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and share it with others. And if you want a set of my workbench plans, click on the link right here in the video. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.